Can we just lay out some of the competitors to SpaceX? So much of what we talked about is uh, SpaceX, specifically because they're sort of pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the commercial space flight. But there's a lot of, like you said, incredible work being done for large companies and small companies, startups and so on. Uh, so who are the competitors to SpaceX? Uh, ULA, United Launch Alliance, Blue Origin, as a Virgin, uh, is it Galactic Orbit? Orbit would Orbit. be the competitor. Vir Virgin Orbit, uh, there's uh, Rocket Labs, Electron Rocket that you mentioned. Um, there's the folks you covered, Firefly. Yep, yep. And uh, what are we missing? There's the the Epic Space Launch System from NASA, I guess that is. Yeah. Technically NASA, but prime contractor Boeing and- Boeing, North and Lockheed. Lockheed. No. Yeah, Lockheed. Yeah, North was the boosters, yep. Okay. Nice. So, like, what uh, what's what's interesting to say to lay out the land here that you're excited about? Just in general, I think if you aren't working on a reusable, some form of reusable vehicle, like physically working on it, pen to paper, or not beyond pen to paper, like bending metal for a reusable vehicle, you're gone. You're toast. Mm -hmm. I think we're well into that being the only provable, you know, way forward. The only way you're going to compete and survive is a reusable rocket. Fully reusable would be great, but that's obviously massively aspirational still, um, but it will come. But to me, um, the, the yeah, the, the list, you pretty much had it right on the head. Uh, there's, there's Astra was another orbital rocket Astra, company. Yeah. Um, they, there, there's a lot of companies. And I, I think right now the, the ones that I personally really believe in, um, you know, Rocket Lab is, is awesome. I really think that they are, one of the few that I believe can actually build a Falcon 9 class rocket, uh, like today with the with their technology, with their knowledge, with their investments, with their funding, you know, like they've and they've proven themselves. There's very few. They have actually made it look easy. I think there's a lot of startups and a lot of new rocket. There's a t too many launch providers popping out of the woodwork right now. They won't all survive, of course. I think realistically, if you look at like airplanes, how many? Airplane manufacturers, you know, there's a handful of airplane manufacturers. There's not hundreds and thousands of airplane manufacturers. I think it'll be a similar thing for space flight. I think we'll see, we'll see, uh, you know, realistically in the terms of jumbo jets and passengers, there's basically two, you know, there's Airbus and there's Boeing. Um, so I, I think in the long run, there'll be two or three major players. I think there'll be, you know, 10 minor, like as far, as far as launch providers, as far as the ones actually leaving earth and getting into orbit, I just don't think there's a ton of room for individuality really, you know? Yeah. I, I would love to see it like a really serious competitor uh, to SpaceX in the way that SpaceX does things. I don't know if you'll like, is quite what I, it's quite the right I kind think, of competitor. Let me, let me say this. ULA has all of the potential, but just operationally they're, you know, they're, you, either Lockheed Martin and Boeing's like love child. Yeah. Like they're kind of set up in a far too traditional manner where they just really aren't given the opportunity to uh, innovate like a lot of these startups are. So Rocket Lab is a little bit more of that nature. Very what do you think so. about sort of just Blue Origin in general? Is Blue Origin's, I, man, I, what Blue Origin has done with New Shepard is amazing and people, just laud it because it's suborbital and it looks very phallic. It's, <laughs> it's uh, so I guess the meme matters also in this <laughs> modern day. But it's sad because people don't see what they are also working on, which is New Glenn. You know, I, I see comments almost every day still of like, it doesn't matter because you know they're they're working on tiny. It's like no, New Glenn is more powerful and more capable than Falcon Heavy. Mm -hmm. New Glenn is almost more of a competitor to, not quite as to Starship, but it's almost in that class. It's it's a it's a heavy lift launch vehicle. It's huge. It's crazy. It'll be nuts. They're very actively working on it. You know, I still think we're three years away from it launching, but that's a very strong competitor in the class of rockets that SpaceX is currently making. So SpaceX is currently leading the way, but that that it's it, it couldn't become a close race. And well, it's just I we'll just for now we'll ignore SpaceX and we'll just kind okay. of talk about like I think who's kind of coming around the corner here. Who's sure. So let, let me just do a quick overview. I'm, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot for getting some cool people here and some yeah. some exciting companies. But Relativity is one that if you, you should definitely get Tim Ellis on the show, who is the uh, CEO of Relativity. They're doing 3D printed rockets. They're the ones that have the world's largest 3D printer. They're getting really close to their first orbital launch. 
Um, the cool thing about them, the reason that I think they're exciting, the reason that I, I, I think they have the potential is just how quickly they can iterate. I think 3D printing a rocket is really dumb. <laughs> I think iterating with 3D printing on a rocket is brilliant because you can literally change software and have like very little, you know, upload a file and have a new rocket. Like mm -hmm. that's amazing. So in, in terms of long-term iterative process, if if we're really talking about like hitting the ground running and and just seeing where the the evolution takes you, I think that's about as good as you can get. You know, I think what SpaceX is doing at Starbase, just physically bending cheap steel is probably also a very valid solution. I, so I really think, and they have the engineering chops. I think they've got some amazing people there. Um, I, again, Rocket Lab, I adore what they work on. And, you know, like every, everyone, there's a caveat here that everything takes longer. Anything, any company tells you it's two or three times longer, just period. Rocket Lab's no different. Um, but I really, they're, they're working on a neutron rocket that's going to be um, like, I think 8,000 to 15,000 kilograms to low earth orbit. Like it's a, a good medium class rocket will compete right along with Falcon 9, hopefully. Um, By the way, neutron would be its name, right? Yep. Yep, it's so not some kind of neutron. It's not some kind of fascinating new physics breakthrough where they're using neutrons. Yes. No, no, but they are using. They're also using liquid methane yeah. and liquid oxygen. Um, I just think it's a really. It's a seems like a a great rocket, and assuming they can actually get it flying in two or three years, I think they're going to be it's here to stay. You know, um, I, I'd be remiss right now. I'm editing a video from an interview with Stoke Aerospace out in in Kent, Washington. Um, it was just one of these companies that they have a long ways to go. Like they're still in the very, they're, they're behind the curve, frankly, in, in terms of launch vehicles right now, because like I said, there's so many coming out of the woodwork, but the idea they're working on their solution to a fully reusable rocket is amazing. One of the coolest concepts I've ever seen. Are you going to cover it in the video? Yeah. 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 Yep. That'll be hopefully coming out the next, depending on what the schedule like is down there. I'm, I'm work. I'm actively editing that as we speak. And it is, so cool. I mean, it is like, it's, it's genius. And, um, if they can actually get it to work, I can see them merging. I can for sure see someone potentially like yeah. I perfectly in a perfect world, they merge with rocket lab. Mm -hmm. They, uh, Stoke develops the upper stage and maybe even the engines. They are the two guys, the, the CEO, the co-founders of that company, um, have, <laughs> they are engine, like propulsion engineer magnificence. They have, they used to, they both of them worked at blue they developed engines in a hurry there and then left blue when it felt like it was getting too slow for them. And now they are, I mean, these, these guys fired uh, a 15 chambered rocket engine instead of four from the Soviet. And we're talking 15 chambers, single turbo pump, uh, 70 times in the month of October. Wow. That's impressive. Wow. And that's like, that was on average, you know, if you think about like days off, time off, yeah. you know, parts changing. Yes. Yeah over twice a day on average of a Hydrolox engine. That's insane. So I I love them and I hope the best for them. <laughs> uh, but they're also topical right now. They're at the top of my head. So um, uh, what about Firefly? What I like about Firefly, they've already got kind of a, a traditional aerospace backing. They're starting to buddy up a lot with Northrop Grumman. So they're going to be building the booster stage for Antares, which is currently flying only out of Wallops, Virginia and is one of the only other commercial providers for the International Space Station. And Northrop Grumman is a very traditional aerospace company, you know, like lots of solid rocket boosters. And they've purchased, ironically, their their current Antares is reliant on Russian engines and Ukrainian boosters, two things that I don't think you're going to be able to get your hands on too much anymore. So yes. they're looking to uh, um, some U.S. propulsion and stages. So they actually are partnering with, uh, with Firefly and their new Antares rocket will be a first stage built entirely by Firefly. So I'm, I'm excited that Firefly already has the propulsion technology. Um, and they actually developed, the, ironically, their, their tap-off cycle engine was developed uh, in partnership with Ukraine, with Ukrainian engineers uh, who developed the, the whole turbo pump system. So it's wow. like, it's this cool mel meddling of, of the, these worlds. Um, their former CEO, Tom Rakusik, was all, like, I have an interview with him and he's, Anyone that can just spout nuances and facts, I just love. I, I just soaked that guy's information up as best I could because he is brilliant. Literally a, a doctor, a rocket doctor, you know, it's <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, that's what, they, like you said, the, the fascinating thing about these folks, they're they're legit. They're, they're such great engineers that people that, that bring these rockets to life. And then there's all the stuff that we 
know and don't know about in uh, in China and other parts and other nations oh, yeah. that are putting stuff into orbit. One of the sad things also is like, you know, with Lockheed and, and Boeing is, um, and just military applications in general, there's so much technology that's currently being developed that we probably know nothing about. Yeah. And um, yeah, it makes me a little bit sad, of course. Yeah. Uh, but for several reasons. One is that the use of that technology is has really much, like, it's not it's not that inspired. It's like a very military focused. Yeah, it's to kill someone. It's to kill someone. Yeah, uh, there's not even like a, a a side application. Right. And and the 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 big one is that the secret it's it's, it's shrouded in, in secrecy as opposed to being a source of inspiration. Yeah, hundred percent. But that's the way of the world. Mm -hmm. Like what was that one plane that you covered that was like we know nothing about? Oh, the X-37B. The X-37B. Yeah, orbited for over 900 days and returned. Like, yeah, I want to know that about thing that thing. What's that thing up to? I don't know. That's what's, it's so frustrating. We know when it launches, people, you know, amateurs track and know, they even will be like, oh, it changed orbit. You know, it raised and lowered its orbit, blah, blah, blah. We generally have just almost no idea what it's doing up there. And it just that saddens me because I want to know. And it's awesome. It's a great vehicle. War. What is it good for?